Hello everyone, welcome to our next episode. In this episode, we will continue talking about utility maximization. And we are actually going to look at uh, a more general environment where we have more than two goods and we are going to use the Lagrangian uh, approach. All right, so here is the, uh, remember, uh, the, our, our problem, maximize the utility function subject to the budget constraint. Well, what is the utility function? So we assume that there are more than one good. So I'm going to, instead of denoting them X, Y, Z, T, etc., I'm going to denote them X1, X2 up to Xn. All right. So therefore our choice variables are X1 all the way up to Xn and they all are non-negative real numbers and then subject to our budget constraint. Well here our budget constraint price of good one times X1 plus price of good two times X2 and so on all the way up to price of good n times Xn which is less than or equal to income. All right. So well <clears throat> Um, because we are going to assume in most of the time the utility function is an increasing function, uh, as we argued before, this constraint is not going to be uh, strictly less than income because uh, you know saving money is going to is not going to give you uh, give the decision maker any utility. So for that reason, without loss of generality, we can just indicate this. Uh, budget constraint as equal to i. As I said, this is simply because we will keep assuming that the utility function is increasing. However, you have to be careful if the utility function is not increasing, well then this inequality, uh, this, this equality does not have to be true. All right, so how do we write the Lagrangian? So the approach of the Lagrangian is very simple. Uh, and if you remember, if you have n variables, uh, in the Lagrangian, you will have n plus one variable because I have one constraint. So therefore, my Lagrangian is going to depend on x1 all the way up to xn and also the Lagrange multiplier denoted by lambda. So the Lagrangian is written simply by <clears throat> your objective function u of x1 all the way up to xn minus lambda times your constraint. And here the constraint is written basically by your expenditure minus income. So it's p1 x1 all the way up to pn xn minus income. All right. And if you remember, uh, we need to basically, uh, for the necessary conditions for optimality, you have to solve the first order conditions. And they are basically uh, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x1 has to be equal to zero. And then partial derivative with respect to good two has to be equal to zero, all the way to the, the partial derivative with respect to good n has to be zero. And remember, I have n plus one variable. So therefore, this n plus one variable, which is lambda, your Lagrangian, uh, your partial derivative with respect to lambda also has to be zero. So um, these are all first order conditions. In order to make sure that your uh, critical points, uh, the, you know, the, the x1, x2, all the way up to xn, and lambda that solves all those n plus 1 equations, these are just uh, critical points. You have to check the second order conditions. Well, obviously, when we have n plus 1 variables, checking uh, second order conditions is not so easy. So instead, we are going to assume some nice utility functional form so that we sure that the, uh, this, the critical value uh, is also the uh, optimal uh, uh, point of, of this utility maximization problem. All right, so what does that mean, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to x1 equals 0 means? Well, uh, it means uh, the derivative of the first uh, uh, part, so it's del u divided by del x1, uh, minus lambda, the partial derivative of this uh, constraint with respect to x1 is basically uh, p1 because uh, all the other parameters, p, uh, pi, xi, they are all constant. And so income is also constant when we take the derivative with respect to x1. So basically that's it. That's the, uh, the Lagrangian's partial derivative with respect to x1. So that must be equal to zero. 
All right, well, symmetrically, this is del u divided by del x2 minus lambda p2 equals zero, all the way up to del, uh, del u divided by del xn minus lambda pn equals zero. And finally, uh, when you take the partial derivative with respect to lambda, the, the derivative of this term with respect to lambda is zero because there's no uh, lambda parameter in the utility function. And so therefore it's only uh, minus uh, p1 x1 uh, plus all the way up to pn xn uh, minus income is equal to zero. Uh, minus income is, uh, is equal to zero. All right, so next step. Well, just simplify those guys. 